In the rugged wilderness, where nature's fury knows no bounds, there exist tales of harrowing encounters with one of the Earth's most fearsome creatures, bears. In this gripping video, we dive into real-life stories of bear attacks, where individuals armed with bear spray found themselves facing the ultimate test of survival. Their experiences shed light on these apex predators' unpredictable and unforgiving nature. It was a cool October evening in 2023, and the beautiful Banff National Park in Canada was adorned with vibrant fall foliage colors. The park served as a haven for nature enthusiasts, and for Doug Inglis and Jenny Goosey, a veteran backpacking couple, it was the ideal setting for their cherished week-long trek. Their journey, meticulously planned and executed, took them through the rugged terrain of Banff's Red Deer Valley, an area they knew intimately. As experienced outdoors people, they had encountered bears before, but had always been cautious, making safety a top priority. Doug and Jenny Jenny, both 62 years old, had always been inseparable. They met at university and have been together ever since, personally and professionally. They worked as researchers in the agricultural field, conducting experiments and contributing to scientific advancements. They operated like a well-oiled machine in their professional life, just as in their personal life. The couple's dedication to nature and environmental conservation was unwavering. They saw themselves as stewards of the Canadian wilderness and made it a point to minimize their environmental footprint. This deep connection to the outdoors was a central part Part of their lives, and they had made it a mission to instill this love of nature in others. As Doug and Jenny embarked on their journey through Banff National Park, they used a Garmin InReach satellite communicator to send regular updates to Doug's uncle, Colin Inglis, and Jenny's mother. This device was more than just a communication tool. It was a lifeline that informed their loved ones about their progress and well-being. Their diligence in planning their adventures extended from meticulous preparations to consistent communication. On that fateful October evening, just before 5 p.m., Doug Doug and Jenny sent a message to Colin, informing him of a minor delay during their hike. At that point, everything seemed under control, and they were likely making dinner at their campsite. Little did they know that their peaceful evening would soon take a tragic turn. At approximately 8 p.m., an SOS signal and a chilling message reached their loved ones. The message on the Garmin inReach device read, Bear attack bad. Colin Inglis received the alarming message, and it was immediately clear that the situation was dire. The couple had been thrust into a life-threatening encounter with one of the Park's formidable inhabitants. Aligned by the SOS signal, Parks Canada sprang into action, deploying a response team to the scene. However, bad weather conditions grounded a helicopter, and the team had to travel on the ground to reach the remote location. The clock was ticking, and time was not on their side. When the response team finally reached the campsite around 2 a.m., they discovered a heart-wrenching scene. Doug Inglis and Jenny Gus lay lifeless close to each other and not far from their tent. It was an unusual and unsettling sight. Their boots and booties were inside the tent suggesting that they had left the safety of their shelter in a desperate bid to fend off the bear. The couple had tried to use bear spray to deter the animal. An empty can of bear spray was found at the site, indicating that they had valiantly fought to protect themselves. The bear had been relentless, and the couple's efforts to defend themselves proved insufficient. The situation took another harrowing turn when the response team encountered the same grizzly bear that had attacked Doug and Jenny. The bear displayed aggressive behavior and charged toward the team, forcing them to take drastic action. With no other choice, they had to shoot and kill the bear to ensure their own safety. The grizzly bear was later identified as a non-lactating older female, more than 25 years old. While she was in fair body condition, her teeth were in poor shape, and she had less body fat than expected for that time of year. The bear had not been tagged or collared, unlike a notorious bear named Bear 148, which had been shot and killed in 2017 due to its close encounters with humans in Banff. Bear attacks in Banff National Park were exceedingly rare. Over the past decade, there had been only three recorded non-fatal contact encounters with grizzly bears in the park, according to Parks Canada. The tragic event involving Doug Inglis and Jenny Goose marked the first grizzly bear-caused fatality in the park in decades. The incident left the entire community in shock, and Colin Inglis, who had known Doug since birth and considered the couple close friends, was left grappling with the loss of his nephew and Jenny. The couple had been remarkable individuals in their professional and personal lives. Their impact was felt in agricultural research, their dedication to environmental conservation, and their mentoring of students in various fields. The couple's untimely passing served as a stark reminder of the unpredictable nature of the wilderness. Despite their meticulous planning and safety measures, they found themselves in the wrong place at the wrong time. The tragedy left a void in the lives of those who knew and loved them, and their absence would be felt deeply by all who had the privilege of knowing Doug Inglis and Jenny Gus. As the news of the bear attack spread through the tight-knit community of Lethbridge's Agricultural Research Center, colleagues and friends mourned the loss 
loss of two remarkable individuals. Doug and Jenny's partnership extended beyond their personal lives and professional careers. They were known as a formidable team, working hand in hand on a wide range of research topics, from grasshopper control to microbiology and the study of diseases in livestock and humans. The couple's dedication to their work and their students was unwavering. They had trained countless students who had gone on to occupy significant positions in various fields, leaving behind a lasting legacy. Doug and Jenny had a bright future ahead of them with plans for retirement, an adventurous van, and countless backcountry journeys awaiting them. Their careful approach to everything, whether in the laboratory or the wilderness, had been their trademark. They had diligently followed safety protocols, carried bear spray, properly stored food, and used a GPS device that alerted park staff in case of distress. They had taken every precaution to ensure their safety, but sometimes the unpredictability of nature cannot be avoided. The tragic incident with the grizzly bear was a stark reminder of the inherent risks in the wilderness, no matter how prepared and experienced one may be. In this case, the bear was determined and unrelenting, and the couple's attempts to fend it off were ultimately unsuccessful. Parks Canada initiated an investigation into the incident. It confirmed that the bear responsible for the attack was a 25-year-old female grizzly in fair body condition, though she was underweight for the season. The bear displayed aggressive behavior not typical of grizzlies in the park. As a result, it had to be euthanized to ensure the safety of park staff and visitors. While Doug Inglis and Jenny Gus are no longer with us, their work and their impact on the agricultural research community will continue to echo through the years. Their legacy is marked by their scientific contributions, passion for the outdoors, and commitment to preserving the natural world. In the face of tragedy, the Lethbridge community and the broader scientific community will remember them as extraordinary individuals who left an indelible mark on the world of research and environmental conservation. The October day was crisp, the air filled with the scent of pine, as the four college wrestlers set out to hunt for shed antlers near Cody, Wyoming. The rugged terrain of the Shoshone National Forest provided a challenging backdrop for their adventure. Brady Lowry and Kendall Cummings, both sophomores at Northwest College in Powell, Wyoming, were joined by teammates August Harrison and Oren Jackson. The wrestlers, bonded by their shared experiences on the mat, embarked on what they believed would be a routine antler hunting expedition. Little did they know that this outing would become a harrowing tale of survival, pitting them against one of nature's most formidable creatures, a grizzly bear. The group covered approximately 15 miles of challenging terrain as the day unfolded, traversing rocky landscapes and dense thickets. The camaraderie among the teammates made the adventure all the more enjoyable. In the late afternoon, they split into pairs to cover more ground, agreeing to meet at a designated rock after an hour. Brady and Kendall, both passionate about the outdoors, ventured into a thick brush, their senses attuned to the surroundings. Little did they know that a seemingly routine moment stumbled Stumbling upon a pile of bear excrement would be the precursor to a life-threatening encounter. Without warning, a massive grizzly bear emerged from the trees, launching a sudden and ferocious attack. Brady, with the force of a freight train, was knocked across the ground, his body tumbled and battered by the relentless assault of the grizzly. Kendall, just 50 feet away, witnessed the horror unfolding before him. The bear's initial target was Brady, a formidable wrestler who had faced countless opponents on the mat. However, the raw power of nature proved overwhelming. As the bear mauled Brady, Kendall faced a moment of sheer terror and a choice flee to safety or intervene to save his friend. With unwavering courage, Kendall chose the latter. Yelling, throwing objects, and even physically engaging with the bear, he tried desperately to divert its attention away from Brady. In a moment of selflessness, Kendall hurled himself onto the bear's back, attempting to pull it away from his friend. The bear, momentarily distracted, turned its aggression toward Kendall. The ensuing attack was brutal, arms and head relentlessly mauled by the powerful jaws of the grizzly. Despite the severity of the assault, the bear abruptly stopped, leaving the injured wrestler's bewildered but temporarily spared. In a flash, the bear returned for a second assault. It was a chaotic and life-threatening situation, with Kendall and Brady both fighting for their lives against a force of nature that brooked no opposition. Amid the chaos, Brady, displaying remarkable resilience, managed to climb up a ridge to seek cell service and call for help. Despite his injuries, he knew that summoning assistance was the only hope for survival. At that moment, Brady's actions became a lifeline, a desperate call for aid echoing through the rugged wilderness. Meanwhile, Kendall, battered and bleeding, feared for his own life as the bear launched another attack. Miraculously, the assault ceased, allowing the injured wrestlers a brief respite. Brady scrambled to find help using the lull, leaving Kendall alone but alive on the mountainside. Two other teammates, August Harrison and Oren Jackson, had heard the commotion and were making their way toward the chaos. They found Kendall battered and bloodied but still alive. The decision they faced was stark. 
follow emergency dispatchers' advice to reach a safe place and wait for help or defy the odds and assist their fallen comrade. With unwavering loyalty, August and Oren rejected the notion of leaving Kendall alone on the mountainside. Instead, they embarked on a challenging mission to transport the injured wrestler down the treacherous terrain, carrying him at times, while Kendall also summoned the strength to walk part of the way. During this time, Brady, having located cell service, called 911, initiating a rescue operation that would soon involve Park County search and rescue. The group's resilience and determination were a testament to the bonds forged on the wrestling mat and the unyielding spirit that binds teammates. As emergency responders coordinated their efforts, the injured wrestlers faced a grueling journey down the mountainside. The distance covered was approximately six miles, a daunting trek for individuals already battered by a grizzly bear's relentless assault. The group's unity and determination to stand by one another were the threads holding together a fabric of survival. In the aftermath, Kendall and Brady were transported to hospitals for urgent medical attention. Kendall, flown to Billings Clinic Hospital, underwent multiple surgeries to address the severe wounds on his arms and head. The extent of the injuries, with dozens of staples on his face and head, reflected the intensity of the bear's attack. Brady, transported by ambulance to Cody Regional Hospital, faced his own set of injuries, including a fractured arm. The wildlife officials described the encounter as a sudden surprise encounter with a grizzly bear. Despite the wrestlers carrying bear spray, the swiftness of the attack left them with no opportunity to deploy the protective measure. The Wyoming Game and Fish Department initiated an investigation, acknowledging the increased bear activity in the region and the potential presence of multiple bears. The weight and power of grizzly bears, with males weighing upward of 700 pounds, added a formidable dimension to the wrestlers' battle for survival. In the face of such a potent force of nature, the wrestlers' courage and resourcefulness shone through, creating a narrative of resilience and unity against all odds. Reflecting on the traumatic events, Northwest College wrestling coach Jim Ziegler emphasized the emotional toll on the entire wrestling team. The bonds formed during practices and shared experiences became the foundation for supporting the physical and emotional healing of the team. The long-term recovery journey began for Kendall and Brady, both physically and emotionally scarred by the encounter. Their tale of survival against a powerful and unpredictable force of nature serves as a poignant reminder of the fragile balance between humanity and the wild, unforgiving landscape surrounding us. As the story unfolds, the wrestling team at Northwest College, bound by adversity, stands united in the face of an indelible moment that forever altered the course of their lives. The bond forged on the wrestling mat, now tested in the crucible of a grizzly bear's assault, remains unbroken, a testament to human connection and resilience in the face of nature's relentless power. In the pristine wilderness of Alaska, a wave of terror swept through the vast expanse of forest and mountains as a series of bear attacks left the local communities on edge. In just one week in June 2017, the tranquility of the region was shattered by four gruesome encounters, resulting in two fatalities that sent shockwaves through the state. The first incident unfolded near Anchorage, where two avid cyclists, Alex Ippoliti and James Frederick, ventured into a woodland for a weekend ride. The serene surroundings quickly turned ominous when a bear attacked Frederick, leaving him with severe lacerations to his neck and the loss of part of his biceps muscle. Hippolyte, armed with bear spray, managed to fend off the assailant, possibly a mother bear guarding her cub. This marked the beginning of a tragic sequence of events that would grip Alaska in fear. Just a week before this cycling horror, another fatal bear mauling had occurred in a remote area approximately 275 miles northeast of Anchorage. Aaron Johnson, a 27-year-old geologist working for Alaska Biological Research Inc., was collecting geological samples near Pogo mine when she fell victim to a hyper-aggressive bear. The attack resulted in her untimely death, and her colleague Ellen Trainer, a 38-year-old biologist, was injured. In a swift response, authorities killed the bear responsible for the attack. The string of tragedies continued the day after Johnson's death, when a 16-year-old boy named Patrick Jack Cooper was chased and killed by a black bear while participating in a race near Anchorage. Cooper made a desperate call to his family moments before the bear attacked. Despite efforts by a park ranger to deter the bear with a gunshot, it managed to escape, prompting state biologists to later euthanize four black bears in the Bird Ridge area, including the one believed to have attacked Cooper. Such a cluster of bear attacks was unprecedented in Alaska's history. Rick Sinat, a wildlife biologist with extensive experience, expressed his astonishment, stating that there had only been six fatal bear attacks in the state over the past 130 years. The sudden surge in incidents left both residents and authorities bewildered and concerned. The Alaska Department of Fish and Game acknowledged the heightened anxiety among 
among Alaskans and issued recommendations for safety in bear country. They advised carrying bear spray or a firearm while hiking, running, or cycling through bear habitat. The guidelines suggested standing ground and talking firmly to a bear if encountered rather than running away or playing dead. In the face of an attack, throwing rocks or striking the bear around the face was recommended as a last resort. As the community grappled with these shocking events, more details emerged about the tragic incident involving Aaron Johnson. An investigation revealed that Johnson and Trainer, both experienced biologists, were collecting soil samples for ABR Inc. when they encountered the hyper-aggressive black bear. According to preliminary findings, the bear, identified as an adult male, displayed predatory behavior rather than a defensive attack. The president of ABR Inc., Stephen Murphy, shed light on the two women's terrifying ordeal. Moments before the attack, Johnson and Trainer discussed bear awareness, highlighting the irony of the situation. The bear, estimated to be just 10 feet away when first spotted, stalked the women before launching its ferocious assault. Trainer knocked down by the bear, valiantly deployed bear deterrent spray, managing to save herself from more severe injuries. The bear briefly retreated but returned, moving between the victims hyper-aggressively. Despite Trainer's efforts, the bear continued its assault, and the attack lasted for some duration. Tragically, Johnson lost her life during the ordeal. Trainer's swift and heroic actions, who radioed a Mayday alert and was flown to safety, highlighted the courage displayed in the face of unimaginable danger. A helicopter dispatched to the scene recovered Johnson's body, but not before the bear had carried it away. In a subsequent confrontation, the bear was fatally shot by responders. In the aftermath of this unprecedented tragedy, questions lingered, and investigations by the Alaska Department of Fish and Game sought to understand the circumstances leading to such an aggressive bear attack. Initial examination suggested that it was a predatory rather than a defensive attack, a rare incident in bear encounters. ABR Inc., a company with a history of working in bear country without incident, expressed shock over the unprecedented fatality. The employees, including Johnson and Trainer, had undergone bear awareness training, and all six workers at the site were equipped with bear spray. The crew made the decision to use bear spray instead of firearms for field safety, emphasizing the unpredictability of bear behavior and the challenges of defending against such powerful predators. Pogo Mine, where the fatal mauling occurred, cooperated with authorities and took immediate measures to enhance field safety. As operations resumed, the mine implemented dedicated bear guards as a standard practice, emphasizing the need for heightened precautions after the tragic events. Alaska, known for its breathtaking wilderness and diverse wildlife, was grappling with the aftermath of an unprecedented series of bear attacks. The community mourned the loss of Aaron Johnson and Patrick Cooper, while grappling with the realization that even the most experienced and prepared individuals could fall victim to the unpredictable nature of the wild. The incident served as a stark reminder of the delicate balance between humans and the formidable creatures that inhabit Alaska's untamed landscapes. On the fateful summer day of August 20, 2020, tragedy struck a remote cabin in the province of Saskatchewan, Canada. Stephanie Blay, a 44-year-old woman, lost her life in a rare and shocking black bear attack, leaving her family devastated and the community in disbelief. The incident not only marked a heartbreaking loss, but also became the first fatal bear attack in the province since 1983, according to the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, RCMP. Stephanie, her husband Curtis, and their two young children, Eli, 9, and Uma, 2, sought refuge at the family's cabin near McKee Lake, north of Buffalo Narrows. The serene wilderness was a familiar retreat for the Blay family, who were well-versed in bear safety protocols, having spent numerous occasions at the remote cabin. The tragic sequence of events began when Stephanie, facing water supply issues at the cabin, reached out to her father, Hubert Esquirol, via a satellite phone. Little did anyone know that this routine call would turn into a nightmare. Stephanie's decision to make a call in an open area past the tree line for better satellite reception inadvertently exposed her to an unforeseen danger. On the other end of the line, Hubert recounted the chilling moments when the call took a terrifying turn. She called me to tell me that the water line hadn't been working and that her husband had fixed it. She then told her son Eli to run inside and grab an antenna, he revealed in an interview with a local radio station. During this call, Hubert, Stephanie's father, heard unsettling sounds, muffled gurgling followed by an eerie silence. An unsettling feeling gripped him, but he never anticipated the possibility of a bear attack. Fatal bear encounters are exceptionally rare, and the last recording recorded incident in Saskatchewan dates back to 1983. Upon realizing the imminent danger, Curtis Blay, Stephanie's husband, rushed to the scene. However, the pepper spray he used to deter the bear proved ineffective, only aggravating the animal. In a desperate attempt to protect his wife, Curtis resorted to using his firearm, firing two shots at the bear. Tragically, by the time Curtis reached Stephanie, she had sustained injuries beyond recovery. Despite Curtis's valiant efforts to administer CPR, Stephanie's life could not be saved. She was airlifted to the hospital in Buffalo Narrow 
Barrows, where she was pronounced dead. The sudden and unprovoked nature of the attack drew parallels to a similar incident in the Yukon Territory in 2018, where a grizzly bear fatally mauled a mother and her daughter near their family cabin. The family's worst fears were confirmed when conservation officers conducted a necropsy on the bear and found its stomach full of blueberries. This detail indicated that the attack was predatory rather than a defensive response. The shocking revelation added a layer of tragedy to an already devastating event. Stephanie's untimely death prompted her relatives to initiate an online fundraiser to support Curtis and the children. Describing Stephanie as the most loving and passionate mother, the fundraiser aimed to commemorate her vibrant spirit and help the family cope with the financial aftermath of this unforeseen tragedy. The ripple effects of Stephanie's death reached far beyond the remote cabin near McKee Lake. Her diverse and adventurous life, marked by travels to 37 countries and experiences ranging from teaching in Taiwan and Kuwait to working at the United Nations Commission on Human Rights in Switzerland, painted a picture of a woman who embraced life to the fullest. Her father, Hubert Esquirol, struggled to come to terms with the loss, stating, Stephanie passed away at a place where she would not have chosen, but given that she was there, she would take acceptance. He expressed the family's commitment to continue their pursuits and dreams in honor of Stephanie, emphasizing that she would not want them to abandon the joys of life because of this tragic accident. As the community grappled with the shock of the first fatal bear attack in decades, investigators delved into the circumstances surrounding the incident. Initially conducting an investigation, the RCMP handed the case over to the Coroner's Act investigation, with the Ministry of Environment launching its own inquiry into the wildlife-involved tragedy. The bear responsible for the attack was euthanized at the scene, and authorities assured the public that there was no ongoing safety risk. Conservation officers, perplexed by the rare and uncharacteristic behavior of the bear, extended their condolences to the grieving family. In the aftermath of this heartbreaking incident, the legacy of Stephanie Blaze lives on through the memories of those who knew and loved her. Initially aiming to raise $15,000, the online fundraiser surpassed all expectations, accumulating over $75,000 to support Curtis and the children. The outpouring of support highlighted the impact Stephanie had on those around her and the collective empathy of a community touched by an unimaginable tragedy. As the investigation unfolded and the community rallied to support the grieving family, Stephanie Blaze's story became a poignant reminder of the unpredictability of nature and the fragility of life, even in the familiar embrace of the wilderness. The crisp Wyoming air of Turpin Meadows on September 14, 2018, was shattered by a sudden and brutal grizzly bear attack that claimed the life of experienced hunting guide Mark Uptain and left his client Corey Chubon with harrowing injuries. As details of the incident slowly emerged, the community grappled with the shocking loss and the perplexing circumstances surrounding the attack. This narrative delves into the events leading up to the tragedy, the aftermath, and the subsequent investigations that sought to understand the sequence of events that unfolded in the remote wilderness. The ill-fated expedition began as Uptane guided Chubon, a Florida native, on a bow hunting trip. The duo successfully shot an elk on September 13th, prompting them to return the following day to retrieve their prize. Little did they know that their routine endeavor would turn into a nightmare. As they approached the undisturbed elk carcass deep in the Teton wilderness, a tranquil setting turned into a scene of terror. The duo was attacked by two grizzly bears in an inexplicably aggressive manner, catching them off guard as they began field dressing the elk. Under Sheriff Matt Carr, who investigated the scene, revealed that the grizzly bear charged Upton swiftly, leaving no time for reaction. The ferocity of the attack was evident in the injuries sustained by Uptane, whose body was later recovered with preliminary indications pointing towards head and chest trauma, according to Teton County Coroner Brent Blue. In the chaos that ensued, Corey Chubin, despite his injuries, managed to climb to a ridgeline to make a desperate 911 call. The call, surprising given the remote location, reached authorities and initiated the rescue effort. Chubon later revealed in an interview with WESH 2 News that he believed the grizzly bear would be the cause of his demise during the harrowing attack. Chubon, attempting to defend himself and his guide, recounted trying to hand Uptin a Glock handgun, but the attempt failed, and the firearm landed on the ground. The grizzly, momentarily releasing Chubon, charged Uptin again, prompting Chubon to make the life-saving decision to run for help. The survival instinct kicked in, and despite suffering injuries to his leg, chest, and arm, Chubon managed to escape, leaving behind a scene of unimaginable 
unimaginable horror. In the aftermath of the attack, authorities discovered bear spray at the scene, indicating that Uptane had attempted to use it against the grizzly. However, the timing and effectiveness of the spray remained uncertain. The investigation also recovered Uptane's Glock handgun, yet initial indications suggested it hadn't been discharged. Game and fish officials responding swiftly to the incident confirmed the capture and killing of two grizzly bears in the area. The bears, a sow and a grown cub, were euthanized in the early morning hours following the attack. While it was not conclusively determined whether these bears were involved, their proximity to the incident site made it likely. Mark Gaka, a game and fish spokesman, dispelled speculations that the bears might have been recently relocated, emphasizing that there was no prior handling by the game and fish department. As the news of the bear attack reverberated through Wyoming, the local community, family, and friends mourned the loss of Mark Uptane, a seasoned guide and a beloved member of the community. Martin Outfitters, Upton's employer, expressed their grief on Facebook, describing Uptane as a God-fearing man who lived for and loved his family, including his wife and five children. A GoFundMe page initiated by family friend Rowley Perry quickly garnered support, raising over $55,000 within 24 hours. The funds were intended to assist Uptane's widow, Sarah, and their children during the challenging times ahead. The Wyoming Game and Fish Department conducted a thorough investigation, uncovering the incident's key details. A discharged can of bear spray with the safety off was found near Uptain's body. This raised questions about its deployment's timing and efficacy in deterring the grizzly bear. Foot snares were strategically placed at the site to capture the bears responsible for the attack. The ensuing capture of a yearling grizzly bear and the aggressive charge of the sow further solidified the belief that these bears were indeed involved in the fatal encounter. Both bears were subsequently euthanized, bringing a close to the trapping operations in the area. The bear attack in Turpin Meadows on September 14, 2018, stands as a tragic chapter in Wyoming's wilderness history. Mark Upton's untimely death and Corey Chubon's harrowing escape serve as a stark reminder of the unpredictable nature of wildlife encounters in the remote expanses of the Teton wilderness. As investigations continue, the community mourns the loss of a guide, father, and friend, grappling with the reality that the beauty of nature also harbors inherent dangers that demand respect and caution.